You are welcome to Gospel Oracles. Today, we're diving into the intriguing lives and fates of the Twelve Apostles of Jesus Christ. These were no ordinary folks, they hailed from diverse backgrounds, fishermen, peasants, artisans, and left everything behind to follow their master. They witnessed the resurrection of Jesus and were tasked with spreading the gospel worldwide. But, hold on. Their testimonies weren't a smooth ride, they faced persecution and martyrdom, sacrificing their lives for the love of Christ. Each of their deaths is a poignant testament to their loyalty and the extreme cruelty humanity can inflict on its own. Now, if you think their lives ended ordinarily, you're in for a surprise. Their stories are wrapped in mystery, controversies, and some downright macabre narratives. In this video, we're delving into all the details found in the Bible, along with info from the church and historians. So, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and stick around till the end. John, the Beloved Let's shine a light on one of these apostles, John, the Beloved. He's a central and mysterious figure in biblical tales, son of Zebedee and Salome, and brother to James, another apostle. Picture this, a disciple so close to Jesus that he's often referred to as the one whom Jesus loved. This unique bond gave John unparalleled insight into Jesus' teachings and events. Known for his spiritual sensitivity, John played a key role in transmitting Jesus' teachings. He was there at pivotal moments like the Transfiguration and the Last Supper. After Jesus' death, he became a linchpin in the early Christian community in Jerusalem. But, buckle up, John's fate gets mysterious. Persecutions hit hard, especially under Emperor Domitian for preaching in Ephesus. Tradition says John faced a boiling cauldron of oil, and survived miraculously. Emperor's Response Exile to Patmos, an imperial prison. Quick note, no biblical verse backs the hot oil part, it's church tradition. Post-turmoil, John is on Patmos, having apocalyptic visions in the book of Revelation. The mystery continues around his death. Despite Roman attempts, John supposedly died a natural death. According to Bishop Polycrates, cited by Eusebius, he passed away in Ephesus around 100 AD at 94. But, when Constantine checked his tomb for a memorial, it was empty. John's final years, surrounded by life's enigmas, marked a departure from this world. The wisdom these apostles gained over the years became a pillar in the Christian community. Their words, soaked in spiritual depth, guided, corrected, and encouraged the faithful. Rooted in their experiences with Christ, their teachings resonated with authority and love, nourishing the growing faith. In his twilight days, John reflected on the history he'd seen, from humble beginnings to struggles in Ephesus. Every word he wrote emphasized the gospel's heart, unconditional love in Jesus Christ. His book of Revelation offered hope, pointing to Jesus triumphing over evil. Even in adversity, triumph belongs to God. John left an immeasurable legacy, a founding apostle, and an exemplar of faith, love, and perseverance. Now, on to James, known as James, son of Zebedee. Witness to the miracles and close agony of Jesus, his post-death story took a sharp turn. King Herod Agrippa, eager to please the Jews, ordered his execution. Details are scant, but tradition leans toward beheading or sword piercing. Now, let's shed some light on an interesting detail, there are two apostles named James in the scriptures. We've already discussed James, the son of Zebedee. 
The second one is James, the son of Alphaeus, also known as James the Less. His role in the Gospels is relatively discreet compared to others. After Jesus' death, information about him becomes even scarcer. Tradition suggests he might have played a part in spreading the Gospel through possible missionary journeys. As for James the Less's death, the lack of specifics in the scriptures and diverse traditions make it a point of uncertainty. But according to Christian doctrine, he, too, met his end by orders of King Herod Agrippa I in Jerusalem, facing a public beheading. This image of James is often depicted in religious art. In first century Jerusalem, the news of James the Less's death hit hard. He was a pillar of the early church, and his martyrdom wasn't just a personal loss for Jesus' followers but a clear sign of rising tension between the young church and Jewish and Roman authorities. It became a defining moment, emphasizing the serious and costly nature of the Christian mission. James's death stirred both mourning and determination among the apostles, heightening their awareness of the imminent danger. Yet. James's death wasn't in vain, it sparked a new wave of evangelization and testimony among Christians. Despite persecution, the church expanded beyond Jerusalem and Judea, reaching Samaria and eventually the far reaches of the Roman Empire. The Gospel, nurtured by the blood of martyrs, found fertile ground in hearts thirsty for hope and truth. Meanwhile, James the Less continued his discreet yet vital ministry. Although scriptures provide few details, church tradition suggests he played a significant role in spreading the faith during uncertain and challenging times. Reflecting on the lives of these two Jameses, we find inspiration for subsequent generations of Christians. They represent the diversity within the church, one with a public role and a dramatic end, the other with a quieter but equally important contribution. Their stories echo in the church's memory, reminding believers that the path of discipleship can take many forms. Each, in their way, embraced the call to follow Christ, whether in the public square or the discreet shadows of faithful service. Now, let's pivot to another central figure, Peter. Originally Simon, a Galilean fisherman, was called by Jesus to become a fisher of men. Later, his name changed to Peter, symbolizing the solidity of his faith. Peter was portrayed as fervent and dedicated, witnessing miracles and even recognizing Jesus as the Christ. Playing a central role in the Last Supper, Peter also led the apostles. However, his denial of Jesus during the arrest was a significant event, followed by profound repentance and restoration after the resurrection. Post-Jesus, Peter embarked on a journey across the Roman Empire to spread the gospel, eventually settling in Rome, where he led the Christian community. In the Acts of the Apostles, Peter plays a crucial role in expanding the gospel, especially to the Gentiles. In 64 AD, a great fire in Rome led Emperor Nero to blame Christians, triggering relentless persecution. Peter, arrested, faced a death sentence as part of these tragic events. A poignant narrative emerges regarding the Apostle Peter in the annals of Christian tradition. Tradition holds that, in an act of profound humility, Peter requested to be crucified in an inverted manner head downwards. The chosen location for this crucifixion was the Vatican Hill, now adorned by the majestic Basilica of St. Peter. Peter's inverted crucifixion became a courageous and final testimony, signifying his unwavering faith in Jesus Christ. During a time of persecution, Christians faced torture and horrendous executions. Peter's decision to be crucified upside down, as narrated by tradition, was not only an act of humility but a powerful testimony of his devotion to Christ. 
This choice reflects the profound transformation from the impetuous fisherman on the shores of the Sea of Galilee to the pillar of the church, a leader whose faith guided countless others. As flames of persecution burned, the Christian's faith spread with even greater vigor, an unquenchable flame defying oppression and death. Peter's death was not the end but a new beginning. His journey marked by denial and restoration, bravery, and sacrifice continues to inspire and encourage Christians through the centuries. In the complex tapestry of history, Emperor Nero's responsibility for the death of the Apostle Judas Thaddeus becomes apparent. Despite being less mentioned in the Bible, Judas Thaddeus played a significant role in questioning Jesus' words at the Last Supper. Post-Jesus, he contributed extensively to spreading the gospel in Mesopotamia and Persia. Christian tradition offers diverse narratives about Judas Thaddeus' death, suggesting possible martyrdom by stoning or blows from an axe. Regardless of specifics, his death symbolizes dedication and fidelity to Christ, making him one of the patron saints of lost causes, a beacon of hope in challenging situations. Andrew, brother of Simon Peter. Andrew, overshadowed by more prominent apostles, had a unique closeness with Jesus from the start. Associated with crucial moments in the Gospels, Andrew's importance extends to being the founder of the Church of Constantinople. Tradition states that he faced crucifixion in Patras, Greece, on a cross in the shape of an X, later known as the Cross of St. Andrew. Andrew's crucifixion, like Peter's, was a testament to the unworthiness to die in the same way as Jesus. His legacy endured even after centuries, with his remains brought to Scotland, where he is venerated. Philip from Bethsaida Philip, called by Jesus from Bethsaida, found himself involved in significant episodes, including the miraculous feeding of the multitude. His logical evaluation of material resources contrasts with Jesus' divine intervention, showcasing the human perspective in the face of challenges. Even after Jesus' death, Philip played a crucial role in propagating the gospel, undertaking missionary journeys to regions like Samaria. His journey, marked by encounters with challenges and miracles, contributed to the early growth of Christianity. The information regarding the death of the Apostle Philip in the New Testament is scant, leaving a void filled by church traditions. The specifics surrounding his demise lack a clear consensus, with accounts proposing that Philip faced crucifixion and stoning in Hierapolis, Asia Minor, around 80 AD during the persecution ordered by the Roman Emperor Domitian. Simon, known as Simon the Zealot, stands out among the apostles for his unique identity and unwavering commitment to his principles. His life before encountering Jesus remains shrouded in mystery, but the designation, Zealot, suggests a possible association with a politically and religiously fervent group devoted to Israel's independence. The details of Simon the Zealot's death are scarce in the scriptures, with most accounts indicating brutal torture, including flaying and cleaving, during the persecution of Christians by the Roman Emperor Trajan. Bartholomew, one of the Twelve Apostles Bartholomew, chosen by Jesus as one of the Twelve Apostles, embarked on a journey of preaching the Gospel in India after Jesus' death. His successful conversions drew the ire of King Astyages, leading to Bartholomew's arrest and execution. Historical records offer limited details about Bartholomew's death, and Christian tradition provides varied narratives. One account suggests martyrdom by flaying, a brutal execution method, while another, rooted in Eastern Orthodox Christian tradition, narrates miraculous escapes from execution attempts, concluding with his crucifixion upside down in Hierapolis, Asia Minor, during the persecution by Emperor Trajan. In the year 51 AD, 
Bartholomew endured the gruesome ordeal of being flayed alive before facing crucifixion upside down. His skin was publicly exhibited as a stark warning to other Christians. Matthew, the Apostle, and Evangelist Originally Levi, a tax collector in Capernaum, Matthew's life took a transformative turn when called by Jesus. Despite societal disdain for his profession, Matthew's enduring contribution was the Gospel, a foundational part of the New Testament. According to ancient Christian traditions, Matthew continued preaching after Jesus' ascension. The widely accepted tradition surrounding his death asserts that Matthew was martyred in Nadab, Ethiopia, during Mass, killed by the sword, bearing witness to his unwavering faith in Jesus Christ. Thomas, also known as Doubting Thomas. Thomas, one of the Twelve Apostles and known for his skepticism, expressed doubt about the resurrection, earning him the moniker, Thomas the Doubter. His transformation occurred when he was invited by Jesus to touch the wounds, leading to his proclamation, My Lord and my God. Limited information exists about Thomas's later life, with Christian traditions suggesting involvement in missions in India. According to this narrative, Thomas met martyrdom by spears in Chennai, India, following a successful evangelization mission. In this segment, we delve into the narrative of Judas Iscariot, a name etched in history as a symbol of betrayal within the Gospels. His role as the apostle who betrayed Jesus to religious authorities has resonated through centuries. Judas's life before becoming a disciple of Jesus remains shrouded in mystery, and initially, he shared a common calling and purpose with other followers of Christ. The tragic episode unfolded during the Last Supper, when Satan entered Judas, compelling him to betray Jesus for thirty pieces of silver. The infamous identification of Jesus to religious leaders occurred through a kiss, marking the one to be arrested. The motives behind Judas's betrayal are complex, ranging from possible disillusionment to unmet expectations regarding the anticipated earthly kingdom. Following the realization of the consequences of his actions, Judas attempted to return the thirty pieces of silver but, consumed by guilt and remorse, ultimately hanged himself. Christian tradition often underscores Judas's fate as a poignant reminder of the gravity of betrayal, shedding light on the intricate interplay between human free will and the divine plan. Judas's death by hanging, as depicted in the Gospels of Matthew and Acts, took place in a field known as the Field of Blood or Potter's Field, acquired with the returned silver. This field, situated near the Valley of Hinnom in Jerusalem, was originally designated for the burial of foreigners and criminals. Acquired by religious leaders for burying foreigners, it became the Field of Blood, symbolizing Judas's betrayal through the shedding of Jesus' blood. Beyond its association with betrayal, the field also became an emblem of repentance and redemption. The New Testament narratives, found in Matthew 27 verses 3-5 and Acts 1 verses 18-19, slightly differ in details but converge on the tragic outcome. In Matthew, Judas repents, returns the silver, and hangs himself, while in Acts, his fall results in his body bursting open. Despite these nuances, both accounts emphasize the profound remorse and despair that marked Judas's tragic conclusion. The story of Judas serves as a solemn reminder of the far-reaching consequences of betrayal and the weight of repentance without the presence of hope and forgiveness.